prepared to move on my agenda. I'm moving it seconded by Councilor Hart. Okay, Ms. Hayden, we have it on the floor seconded by Councilor Hart. All those in favor? Thank you. Number three on the agenda is the Bethel Pecuniary Interest. Does anyone have any? Seeing none, we'll go on to number four, delegation. We have a presentation. Uh, the presentation will be shown on the screen in front of you. Um, if you'd like, if you'd like to, come to come to the podium, podium please, and give us your name and who you represent. Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm Mr. Just Mayor. Gonna, I'm going to make a motion in case they go over 10 minutes, but uh, moved by myself, second by Council Chambers, at the time for the presentation for item 4.1, Brian Lenny and Nicole Fernandez and Bridge Gas be extended past the time, 10 minute time limit if required. Absolutely. We have a seconder. And all those in favor? Opposed? Carries? Carry on. Thank you, Your Worship, and members of Council for the opportunity to present this evening. My name is Brian Lenny, uh, Senior Advisor of Municipal Affairs for Enbridge Gas for Southern and Southwestern Ontario. Uh, with me is Nicole Fernandez. Uh, she's the Manager of Operations for Enbridge Gas for this area and uh, responsible for Brent County and surrounding areas. Gary, can you start the presentation, please? Thank you. We're not moving ahead. Gotta love technology. Thank you. Uh, so why are we here tonight? Uh, so we're here to cover three separate topics. So the first is to provide an update on natural gas expansion in the county. The second is to provide details on Ember Gas's franchise renewal with the county. Um, or it's a requirement of the Ontario Energy Board under, under provincial legislation, the Municipal Franchise Act. So Nicole will be covering that. And then finally, uh, to provide a brief update on some of Enbridge Gas's low carbon plans. So first, uh, let's discuss natural gas expansion in the county and Enbridge's plans. So to set the stage, um, this map is quite helpful just for a, a sense for where natural gas distribution transmission lines are in the county. So we currently serve uh, 12,000 customers and this map here is a, it's called a customer density map and shows where our lines are. It also shows the areas where, uh, you know, there's potential for expansion. So you can see the areas where, um, you know, there are no green or, or orange or uh, any lines of intensity. That's where there are, it currently is no natural gas. So those would be the areas we'd be looking at for future expansion. So a bit of background on natural gas expansion. And really I can sum this, this all up simply in that the Ontario Energy Board's principle uh, since 1998 has been growth pays for growth. So if you are uh, a resident, a business who is not currently a customer of the natural gas system and you wish to connect to the system, the Ontario Energy Board's rules and regulations state you have to pay to connect to the system. No, not dissimilar from hydro or perhaps for other utilities um, who have similar mechanisms in place. But the Ontario Energy Board's rule essentially is that growth pays for growth and that holds existing customers in the county neutral or harmless from the cost of that customer who's wishing to connect to the system. So um, if the connection does not meet that economic test of the Ontario Energy Board, the customer often has to pay an upfront cost. So, so many of you may have heard from local residents who have gotten a quote from Enbridge quite high. Uh, to connect to the system and that reflects actually the rules and regulations of the Ontario Energy Board. That's a requirement that we provide a quote and the customer has to pay that cost up front to connect. So that often, as many of you know, is a disincentive because some of those costs can be quite heavy up front. So in some instances though, where a community or a group of uh, potential customers, and we'll talk about Harley and Glen Morris areas shortly, um, where they're far away from Enbridge Gas's current infrastructure, the option does exist to connect through a monthly surcharge added to those new customers' bills under government programs. So 
successive governments since about 2015, 2016, so that included the previous Liberal government and the current government, have uh, had programs, expansion programs under different names. And uh, the current program that uh, the provincial government of the day has in place is called the Natural Gas Expansion Program. So the recent history here in Brant County is that uh, the provincial government launched what they called phase two of that program in 2020. So they opened up um, an opportunity for municipalities, for, for gas distributors to apply uh, to the Ontario Energy Board and to the provincial government to serve areas that are currently unserved by natural gas. Uh, and in the Brant County case, we worked with staff in 2020 uh, to uh, provide an application to the government to serve both the Harley and the Glen Morris areas. So phase two, um, it enabled uh, funding of eligible expansion through a $1 a month surcharge on every natural gas customer's bills across the province, and then an expansion surcharge on the customer's monthly bills in those specific areas. So this was a very popular and oversubscribed program. There were, were over 200 applications, roughly two billion in total cost was received by the government. The government ended up funding uh, approximately 27 of the 200 applications and about 230 million. And just to give a uh, level set on that too, one project in particular, which was Bob Cajun, received about close to 100 million of the 230 million um, in terms of projects that went forward. So the provincial government, in the end, uh, received a package of information from the Ontario Energy Board, and the provincial government was the, uh, the ones who made the decisions on which projects would proceed. So unfortunately, um, the province did not select the Harley and Glen Morris areas. So that leads to the next steps in, in how we, we advance this and continue to move this forward, and for other areas of the county as well, quite, plain, quite frankly. So phase three. Um, so just three and a half weeks or so ago, the Minister of Energy sent a letter uh, to municipalities that submitted projects um, that were not selected for phase two. It went to every uh, head of council. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, the Minister of Energy did send that through um, as correspondence. Uh, they announced a new phase three of the program. Uh, very light on details at this time. We don't have any uh, particulars on the when, the how, the who, the what of this at this time. Uh, other than consultation is uh, potentially to begin in the fall. And, um, you know, what's going to be critical for this in working uh, with ourselves at Enbridge Gas and working with county staff, and economic development staff in particular, is finding those projects, whether we resubmit Harley and Glen Morris uh, as projects again, do we find other projects to submit, do we submit multiple projects, that will be critical as we get the parameters for the project uh, to understand what we can and uh, we can and should submit uh, at your will. But beyond that, and uh, something we, we certainly want to discuss too is, so there's you know the government mechanism, which is the Natural Gas Expansion Program, but then there's also the work that Enbridge is doing right now to go beyond the Natural Gas Expansion Program to move projects forward. So in late November uh, 2020, the Ontario Energy Board approved uh, what at the time was called a temporary connection surcharge. It's basically called the expansion surcharge now. So in situations where the cost to attach to our system is not feasible, uh, economically feasible at the regular OEP approved uh, rates and rules, the expansion surcharge is applied in addition to that um, and is the substitute for the upfront payment. So in these cases, we're not talking about Enbridge and the government and, and the uh, you know, natural gas expansion program, we're talking about strictly Enbridge and the customer and the customer's upfront payment is removed and instead that's uh, that is over a monthly surcharge on their bill to a limit of 40 years. So um, the Ontario Energy Board approved to a maximum of 40 years the customer could pay back the project. So perhaps most critically for the county, because I know this has been a discussion in the past, the Ontario Energy Board, as part of this approval, has allowed for county, for municipal governments to contribute to make projects economically feasible. So for example, if the economic test was run and a project was the project payback period was 47 years as opposed to 40, the county could conceivably contribute that seven year difference to the cost of the project to make it feasible to bring it on board. However, the county could not contribute, uh, per the Ontario Energy Board's rule on this, to lower that 40 year payback, the monthly surcharge, to t 10 years or 20 years or five years. So it's just to get it within the 40 year framework. So that is allowed though, and so it could potentially bring 
projects forward. Um, it's separate from the natural gas expansion program, as I mentioned. We actually have a website that we launched, uh, I would say about six months ago, to uh, basically track all projects that are moving forward. Some are as simple as just one customer. Some are 20, 30 customers. And what we're really looking at with this one is short main extensions to get the most possible customers. So what we're looking at here would be where we have a natural gas main that is very close to a group of customers, but it, you know, maybe it's 100, 200 meters away. That's the type of thing that'll likely fly subject to that economic test under this program or under this uh, temporary connection surcharge. So we're examining projects across uh, Ontario. I was in contact with uh, economic development staff a couple weeks ago just to kind of set the stage and talk about how we could collaborate on this. So hoping that um, some more further discussions can move forward about areas in the county that we could we could uh, run the economic test and see if we can move them forward. And besides that though, we'll continue to monitor what happens with phase three. We'll submit projects on behalf of the county as well as that. So we've got a couple irons in the fire here that we can take advantage of to, uh, to move forward projects in the county. So now I'm gonna turn it over to a separate item to Nicole Fernandez to talk about the uh, franchise issue. Thank you. Okay, so I guess first we'll start with uh, what is a municipal franchise agreement? Uh, the natural gas franchise is the means by which we deliver safe, reliable, and affordable natural gas to our customers in the county of Brant. The franchise agreement is a requirement of the OEB or the Ontario Energy Board under provincial legislation, specifically the Municipal Franchises Act. So the municipal franchise agreement is an agreement between a municipality that wants a uh, gas distribution system installed within its boundaries and a natural gas distributor that wants to provide that service. The agreement must be submitted to the OEB for approval under section nine of the Municipal Franchise Act. Uh, the terms and conditions are set and approved by the Ontario Energy Board. Um, to give you a little bit of background, prior to 1988, uh, the franchise agreements between municipalities and utilities were negotiated on an individual basis. But since 1988, a model franchise agreement was adopted by the OEB in consultation with AMO and the natural gas utilities at that time. It uh, was updated in the year 2000 and is used now in all municipalities. It provides a template to guide natural gas distributors and municipalities as to the terms and conditions the OEB generally finds reasonable. So that's an, essentially an OEB acceptable template. Terms and conditions include emergency response, work in roadways, pipe relocation, decommissioning and abandoning pipe, uh, various responsibilities of both the gas company and the municipality. So the latest franchise agreement renewal was finalized at a council meeting on July 22nd, 2003 with the former Union Gas Limited and the County of Brant. So the 2002 franchise agreement is the same OEB approved 2000 model franchise agreement as we're proposing for the current renewal. So no changes to the agreement uh, itself. So the entire process to renew a franchise agreement can take six to 12 months. Enbridge Gas begins the renewal process by sending a letter and franchise renewal package to the county requesting that the renewal process commence, um, and that is completed. The franchise agreement is placed on the agenda for council consideration and approved through a resolution. Then the county puts a bylaw related to the franchise agreement through first and second readings only. Then a certified copy of that resolution is sent back to Enbridge Gas. So once uh, we receive the resolution, Enbridge Gas prepares an application to the OEB publishes a notice in a local newspaper and serves the clerk with a copy of the notice. The role of the OEB is to adjudicate the application. So the OEB's hearing process starts with the notice to the public and interested parties, inviting them to participate in the hearing or to write a letter with any comments. Once the OEB considers all of the evidence before it, including providing for questions on that evidence and any written submissions, the OEB makes a determination as to whether or not to approve the municipal franchise agreement and issue a certificate. 
So if approved, the OEB will issue a decision and order granting approval of the franchise agreement and the PPCN, the affixity certificate. The order, unapproved bylaw, and municipal franchise agreements are then forwarded to the clerk for consideration by council again. And then once the bylaw is approved by council, the franchise agreement is renewed for another 20 years. So I will pass it back to Brian to talk about low carbon. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, so I'll end the presentation, uh, it's certainly a topic that uh, a lot are talking about these days with uh, the focus on low carbon, net zero, but what is Ember doing, you know, as we, we go on the road to natural gas expansion and working to expand to more areas in the county, what are we doing um, to lower the carbon content of gas and, uh, and continue on with that? So our goal, and it's stated simply, is that we are, uh, our plan is to be net zero in our operations by 2050 and to have a 35% reduction in the intensity of our greenhouse gas emissions uh, by 2030. So how we do that is uh, a, a lot of different ways. I'll focus on a couple of them specifically tonight uh, on the final slide here. Uh, some that particularly may be of interest uh, is renewable natural gas, and this will be an opportunity for folks in the county to perhaps participate in, uh, in the process here. So, Renewable natural gas is uh, gas created through landfills, but also from farm waste, food scraps, organics, uh, wastewater as well. Renewable natural gas uh, is then injected into our system and it displaces conventional natural gas, so the gas we get from Western Canada and other areas. Some studies have said uh, that uh, renewable natural gas could eventually make up about 37, 38% of the entire uh, content of natural gas in uh, in Ontario if fully built out. Add to that that in specific areas right now we're working on displacing current uh, natural gas with hydrogen. So right now there's a pilot in Markham where 3,600 customers are getting a quantity of hydrogen in their natural gas. It's displacing the existing natural gas as a test. So far so good uh, for those customers. And the hope is to expand that uh, beyond there uh, to further hydrogen into the system uh, to displace conventional natural gas. There's other areas though that we are advancing as well, such as natural gas heat pumps, district energy system, renewable energy as well, certainly a big focus. Carbon capture is another area, um, geothermal. And uh, you know, message really to leave with you is that from members' perspective, we are absolutely uh, an oil and gas company. Uh, but our focus now very much is on the future and, and what other offerings we can we can have there. And from an Enbridge Gas perspective, owned by Enbridge Inc., a big focus for us certainly is on renewable natural gas and the opportunities are out there for producers and also uh, locally to uh, to inject that into the system. So certainly I know a lot of content uh, tonight, but um, we really did want to come to council and thank you for the opportunity uh, to provide an update uh, uh, on various things we have going on. So certainly Nicole and I, happy to take uh, any questions. Thank you, Brian. Are there any questions uh, for the delegation? Uh, Councillor Pierce, you're first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you, I, I guess to Brian. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Nicole. Thanks for the presentation. <clears throat> My question is, um, when we talk about phase two and we were looking at Harrisburg and Glen Morris and they weren't chosen, was there any indication as to why the ones that weren't chosen were not, because um, where I'm going with this, depending on what that response was, if there was a response, it may or may not make sense to put those back forth for, for the, the phase three. So I'm curious, uh, was it something that it was just you know too far or something we didn't do right? I'm curious as there was any feedback to that. Thank you for the question. And this is a question we get a lot. And the answer quite simply is there was no feedback given. The province essentially just selected what they selected. We were not told why certain projects went versus others. Um, we were given no feedback, so there was no way to know. What I can say about that though is we did submit every project with economics to the government, you know, with how many customers. The hope is that these projects could stand again and, and move forward based on the economics that we presented. For every project across the province, we presented the best economics possible to get those customers connected. It just so happens the province decided to choose what they chose without really, um, you know, uh, an explanation, I guess, the best way to describe okay. it there. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. Councilor Gatward, you're next, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to um, Mr. Lenny. Um, 
the hydrogen that you're combining now with the gas, um, is it a lower cost product for the consumer or higher or the same? Thank you for the question. Uh, so excellent question in the sense that what we're doing right now is just a test pilot to see does this work. So right now in Markham, it is approximately 1% of the total content of the gas going to the folks house is uh, a hydrogen. So costs for hydrogen vary on the type of hydrogen. That's the most critical thing, right? So there's all different types of color codes for hydrogen. There's green, uh, there's black, there's gray, blue, you name it. And cost really depends on that. So green would be fully renewable energy hydrogen. So hydrogen sourced from solar or wind. Uh, black would be hydrogen that's sourced from coal, for example, right? So those ones, you really lose the benefit of carbon, redu reducing the carbon content because you're producing hydrogen from coal or from gas. So we're aiming for those sources that are, uh, would be in the green uh, range. And so the costs right now, I think, are, are kind of all across the spectrum. I honestly don't have an exact answer for you on that. But uh, this pilot really will, will test that and, and tell us what can move forward in the future. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councillor Miller? Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to uh, the presenters. Um, yeah, we, we were a little tired as a county of, of getting, <laughs> of losing <laughs> every time we, we tried to expand uh, natural gas. Uh, using the province or the programs to help us so uh, we felt that uh, we either do it ourselves or it just doesn't get done and we've uh, I didn't realize it was that complicated until the staff looked into it because uh, there's so many rules like we can't just the, the municipal act constricts us in certain ways you guys are constricted by the energy board and so forth and so forth but at the end of the day I think you, and you you already know this um, we've, we've kind of tasked it to our economic development department to, to help us out there um, but I want to ask you, is, is there any creative or, or neat ways that uh, you see other municipalities trying to expand gas in their community? Thank you for the question. I, I'm going to actually say that uh, the county of Brant and the, the staff reports that have gone forward and the consideration of, you know, um, some types of, of contributions is actually the most forward on this compared to other municipalities. So. You know, my hope in, in speaking with staff further with the economic development folks is, you know, in those, like I mentioned, those ones where, so 40 years, if it's like a 47 years, can we find ways to close those gaps? The county really has been, and this is not just saying this to say this, you know, presenting to, to this council, is the county has been really willing one that I, in my areas, am responsible from Windsor up to uh, Niagara Falls, that has actually brought forward these type of ideas and solutions. So hopeful that, you know, we can find those projects that are maybe, you know, just past that 40 year threshold that we can bring forward um, in consultation with staff and, and yourselves. Can I, a couple more questions, but okay. I'll t listen, if, if you come up with some, something neat and creative you think is, would suit us, let us know, because we'll do it. We'll jump all over. Um, but, but I just want to give you an example. Um, we just reconstructed a road in Paris here. And, and if I look at your map, Paris has got natural gas. Well, not all of Paris has natural gas. There's a street that we just reconstructed that does not have natural gas. I didn't know that till after the street was reconstructed. Would that have been a good time to approach uh, Enbridge and say, uh, there's no natural gas down here. We're gonna reconstruct it. Are you okay with us? Or are you guys coming in and putting pipes in the ground at that time? Would that be a good idea to ask ourselves before we reconstruct a road? Yeah, so the, the simple answer is absolutely. Um, so with the new expansion surcharge, these are the type of opportunities, these short main extensions where we have pipe around, where um, these are the type of opportunities we need to take advantage of, absolutely. Um, the critical thing I'll, I'll mention with the expansion surcharge is that the residents though do have to all sign up. They do have to, to sign a paper that actually says they will uh, commit to that. And then from there, we take the specific addresses, run it through that economic test and see where it lands on the, the, um, that 40 year or less payback period uh, prescribed by the Ontario Energy Board. So yes, absolutely, those are the types of opportunities that we're looking, we'll, we'll be looking for. Okay, well, and, and from talking to the one resident, they were spending $200 a week during the winter on propane. So I know we would get that resident signing up. Um, any thoughts, because I want to get to what you talked about the last one, right? Um, carbon neutral, all that stuff. Any thoughts of uh, expanding the, the, the HER program or the low income program 
to partner with municipalities. And, and right now I'm aware there's um, sustainable Halton Hills. That's a program where they're trying to get their residents to, to well, and businesses to lower their, their, their energy use. Uh, Oxford is, they've been working on it for a while. They're getting pretty close and getting their own program. But what they're doing is they're using, um, you know, your, your property taxes, right? They're putting it on that and then they give the homeowner, you know, 20 years or 10 years to pay it back. So any thoughts or uh, is there any word? Uh, I want to say Ehab, he kind of looks after that. Is there any any thoughts on or anything possible down the pipeline where Enbridge partners with municipalities on any program? Any thoughts on that? The answer to that again is yes. And this is actually a timely question because we're right now before the Ontario Energy Board to get approval for our next four years of our, what's called our DSM or demand side management plan, which is, oh yeah, we're right, right now we're before the Ontario Energy Board to get approval uh, for our, our four year, five year demand side management plan, which is the programs you mentioned. So HER, uh, home winter proofing for low income, all those programs. So one of the things that we've applied to the Ontario Energy Board is for what we're calling um, the missing middle essentially. So you have on one hand, the HER program, which you know, offers up to $5,000 in incentives uh, for, for qualifying. And then you also have the low income uh, program, which you know, is zo zero cost. But in the middle, there's that missing, um, you know, folks who maybe they can't afford to spend all the money for the upgrades to get the 5,000 back. They don't qualify for the low income. So how do you bridge that? And that's a large, that's a large group. So we've applied to the Ontario Energy Board for single measures. And I think these are the areas where we can work with the county and others to partner is single measures. So as opposed to, you you know, under HER, you have to do two or three things like put new insulation and all those things or under the low income program, you have to do all the measures. This one, you just have to do one, and there are opportunities perhaps for joint marketing. We're exploring that with other municipalities, like can we promote programs together, so get the word out to residents, can we do co-promotion with your communication staff, those type of things. So yes, th there are certainly opportunities there as we move that forward. Okay, I'll just, I'd like to say that that middle is a big, big chunk, just so you know. Um, but we as a municipality, I mean, we could look at other, I mean, people that aren't on, on gas, right? So. Um, you think the federal government would help? They're not because <laughs> uh, it's, it's not it's not like the best program they're running either. Um, last question, because um, I'm not sure I'm not sure how natural gas is viewed. Um, I always thought it was a low uh, low carbon uh, kind of uh, fuel. Um, I guess maybe some people think it isn't. And uh, I'm just I don't know if this is outside of a your realm, but you know we've got about 3,000 megawatts of electricity in the province coming offline when Pickering is shut down and that's a lot and do you know um, I know the IES so I don't know how they sleep at night knowing that they got to replace that and more soon but um, do, you, do you guys see uh, natural gas picking up a big slack in that? Yeah that's uh, another I think that's in the news quite a bit uh, about you know the the loss of uh, the nuclear plant there and, and what occurs so yeah from what we had seen some of those natural gas generators, we are not a generator, but some of those generators, um, you know, perhaps will be stepping up to, to take that capacity. Our focus really in the distribution and the transmission of, of it is, you know, those generators will generate the power, but how do we lower that content that actually gets to their door, right? So instead of them generating, um, you know, conventional natural gas, are they generating a large portion of that is renewable natural gas that's actually going into their turbines, right? So that's our focus. But, you know, we certainly have seen those, those news reports as well of, of you know the need for increased uh, natural gas uh, generation certainly thank you very much for the answer appreciate you coming here thank you councillor miller are there any other questions councillor chambers uh, uh, thank you uh, and, and through you to the delegation I, I i may have the terminology wrong as a matter of fact i don't know the terminology but there are the what i'll call the distribution lines that go down the concession roads and the streets that houses tap into to get the natural gas but there's also uh, large uh, pipelines that go from point A to point B to the distribution centers. A few years ago, uh, there were plans for one of these larger lines to go through the western part of Brant County, uh, and there were properties were notified, et cetera. I'm just wondering, uh, not much has been heard about that lately. What is the status of that project?
Okay, so yeah, thank you. Uh, so that, we, I believe that what you're referring to was the, what was called the Hamilton Airport uh, natural gas expansion. So what that would do, um, Hamilton Airport area was awarded um, funding under the natural gas expansion program <coughs> to expand industry around the Hamilton Airport. But the pickup benefits were actually, and I had conversations with county staff about this, the pickup benefits were actually, there was gonna be an increase of capacity for County of Brant because the line actually has to go through the County of Brant. So there was an increase in capacity potential for small commercial, small industrial customers along that way. So that project, we're still currently in the planning process for it. It has gone a bit silent, I totally understand that. Uh, they're currently reworking plans for that, but it is still being planned. It's just it's, it has gone a bit quiet lately as they continue to work on that project. Yeah, but I believe that's the one you're talking about. If it is, it's the one that would have a line that um, would go down through the St. George area. That's the one I'm thinking of. If there's another one, then I do, I'm not sure. <laughs> this, this particular one that I'm referring to was on the western part of the county. It was coming from the north through the uh, western part of the county, eventually going across the hydro transmission corridor to who knows where, I'm, I'm not sure where it ended up. I don't think it's the Hamilton Airport one. I thought it was for the uh, southern uh, part, but I could be wrong. But I know property owners were notified and, and there were meetings, et cetera. But that's five, six, seven years ago, perhaps. We'll, we'll take that one away, uh, Councillor, and, and figure out where that, that's at. I, I, you know, I'm not familiar with, with that one specifically. Uh, ju just for the people that are watching at home, Councillor Eric Coleman has been with us now for probably 25 minutes. Welcome, Councillor Coleman. Are there any other questions for the delegation? Seeing none, uh, what do you want to do with the presentation, Councillor Miller? Oh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, as they talked about, uh, we would like to get that uh, agreement uh, going again after 20 years and uh, keep in mind that we are, if it passes, we're going to do first and second reading and not third reading, if I understand correctly. So um, I'm going to move it and uh, We'll, we'll get asked for a seconder, um, but uh, moved by myself and second by somebody <laughs> that the uh, Council of the County Brant approves the form of draft bylaw and franchise agreement attached here to and authorizes the submission thereof to the Ontario Energy Board for approval pursuant to the provisions of Section 9 of the Municipal Franchises Act. And that the Council of the County Brant request that the uh, OEB make an order declaring and directing that the assent of the municipal electors to the attached draft bylaw and franchise agreement pertaining to the corporation of the county brand is not necessary pursuant to the provisions of section nine, section four of the Municipal Franchises Act. Again, seeking a second. Thank you. Let the record show that the, uh, the, the motion is seconded by Councillor Coleman. Are there any other questions to the motion? If not, call the vote. All those in favor of support? Opposed? You carried, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I brought my bill. It's on your dash. Thank you. Takes us to number five on the agenda, please. The adoption of the minutes from the previous meeting. Councillor Gatwick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Wheat, that the County of Brant minutes of April 26 be approved. Are there any questions on those minutes? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Couple no. Thank you. <coughs> any business arising from those minutes? Consent items to be approved. Councillor Howis, seven point one. Questions, Councillor House? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? You carried. 7.2 consent items to be received. Uh, that's myself, moved by myself, and second by Councillor Wheat that consent items 7.2.1 to 7.2.15 be received as information. 
Does anyone want any of those separated? Councilor Gatwick. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of um, corrections, if I might. 7.2.1. The minutes in our package are April 13th and instead of May 11th. And then 7.2.10, the police services board minutes, they refer to an incident on Willow Street and it should say Willow Lake Road. Thank you, Councilor Gatward. Are there any others? Seeing none with the corrections, nothing else be separated? All those in favor? Thank you. 8.1, <clears throat> Planning and Development Committee Report, Councillor Bell. Yeah, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Chambers that the Planning and Development Committee Report of May 3rd, 2022 be approved. Any questions for Councillor Bell on his report? Seeing none, call the vote to accept the report. All those in favor? None opposed? That's carried, thank you. Uh, Policy Development and Strategic Direction Committee, Councillor McAlpine. Okay. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor House that the Policy Development Strategic Direction Committee report of May 10th, 2022 be approved. Are there any questions for Councillor McAlpine on his report? Seeing none, call the vote to receive the report. Opposed, there aren't any. 8.3 Administration and Operations Committee report, May the 17th, Councillor Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Gatward, that the Administration and Operations Committee report of May the 17th, 2022 be approved, noting there are 13 recommendations. Are there any questions to Councillor Pierce on this report? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Staff reports, um, 9.1, RPT 22151, uh, 14 Market Street <coughs> Reconstruction, Councillor Wheat. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Bell that the Market Street Reconstruction be awarded to Emco Infrastructure Incorporated with a bid price of $4.2 million. Everyone's clear on that. Councillor Pierce. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, if I could, uh, just a question here or comment slash I'm hoping I wasn't the only one that was kind of shocked at the difference in price here. Um, there's a difference of, you know, over $3.4 million from the tender from the tender amount to the next lowest bid. Um, there's a statement in there that, that states uh, good value for the scope of work. I, I'm curious as to how the, um, the same scope of work potentially have a three to four million dollar difference in price. Okay, Mr. Brad worried. Mr. Bradley's gonna speak to that. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through, through you, uh, Mr. Maxwell, the report author is on, on the call tonight, but I, I think probably I can, I can respond, respond to the, I mean, you know, when we put these things out for tender, we, 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 you know, we have a, a construction estimate, and we hope that we'll get something close to the construction estimate, and at this point we have. Um, but I think this is really symbolic of this challenging uh, uh, purchasing market that we're in right now. There's just, there's a lot of work and not a lot of people that, that are interested in doing it. So I think, I think that's probably the explanation on why we've got such a variance between the, uh, the low bid and the second bid. I don't know whether Mr. Maxwell's got anything to add to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, I, I would agree. Uh, we, what we took away from this is that it looked like three, three contractors were uh, probably busy for the summer and already had a lot of work lined up and one was really looking for a good job to fill their summer. Okay, um, and just a follow up, like, yep. and, and this company has done work in the county before? Mr. Maxwell? That's you, correct, it was, it was before my time here, but I understand that they were involved in the Brant uh, Business Park uh, servicing uh, the project that took services under the 403, if, if I'm not mistaken. Nothing else. Story, I guess. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Call, vote all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Number 10, communications, noting the change of the spelling of the church. We have something in front of us here. What do you want to do with it? 10.1. Councilor Miller. Just uh, before we get uh, into it, I was wondering, um, in, in, the, in the letter itself, there it said they had an attached summary of spending on this project, and I did not see that attached summary of spending. And I'm just wondering, is that, was that attached, or was that you and Cynthia? Who, who's on the line, Michael, for that? Thank you, through, through you, Mr. Chair. I, I would look to the clerk whether there was, a, was an attachment provided. Through you, Mr. Chairman, there was no attachment provided to the copy that I received. That being said, there was significant staff discussion um, that I was not involved in. It might have been attached to an original document that way. So, so through you, you were, we could look for that and, and circulate it to council if, uh, if, it, if it exists or perhaps it wasn't attached for what we, what we received. So. Councillor Chambers. I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be a good idea to refer this to, to the planning and development staff for a report to come back at our next meeting. Uh, I think timing is not that crucial. It has to be done tonight. But. I think that's a good idea. You, got a, you have a seconder in Councillor Howes to take it back to staff. Is everyone clear as to the direction of 10.1? Everyone's happy with that? Call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 10.2 correspondence from the City of Brantford. Everyone has that in front of them? Councillor House? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, please start us off with a couple of uh, anecdotes later. If the County of Branch Council supports the May 17, 2022 resolution from the City of Brantford regarding the release of all federal and provincial documents related to former Mohawk Indians, please let us know. Thank you. And further, that this resolution is circulated to planning and Um, just, just a, a point here. Um, neither Councillor Howes or Mayor Bailey, I think your mics are off. My mics was off. Thank you. Was Councillor Howes' mic off too? Uh, yes, it was. All right. He has a green light. His mic was supposed to have been on. Anyway, everyone understands what the resolution is. Call the vote. All those in favor of support. Opposed. Carried. Other business, Councilor Chambers. I'm sorry. Oh, the resolutions. I'm sorry. Number eleven resolutions. Councilor Chambers. Uh, th thanks, Mr. Mayor. The uh, resolution uh, speaks for itself. Uh, just by way of background, if uh, and, and this was brought to me by a, uh, a resident of uh, uh, the area. If you drive into Burford, you'll see the uh, a Burford uh, uh, board that has this, the uh, various plaques of the organizations, et cetera. And on that plaque, it says the home of Adam Henrique, who I think we all know is a professional hockey player that uh, grew up in the Burford area and has been recognized uh, in that way. Uh, the gentleman that brought Emma Woods uh, to my attention, and I admit I didn't know this, uh, told me that Emma was a professional hockey player as well, and uh, it would only seem fitting that Emma be recognized, uh, I, I think, in, in the same way that Adam has been recognized. Uh, I'm not sure of the protocols on how this sign works, and I'm not just exactly sure who put up the Adam Henrique uh, uh, home of uh, sign, but uh, the resolution basically looks at, at ways to uh, uh, give Emma the same recognition as a professional hockey player 
that uh, Adam has. And I think uh, Adam wouldn't be uh, discouraged by that. And, and I think uh, it's important that we all recognize that there are women national or professional hockey players as well, some growing up in our own area. Thank you, Council Chambers. I think it's a good time to talk about this because we have one in St. George out at two, and um, we're gonna have to decide whether we're gonna just keep putting names on the board, uh, which hopefully if there's enough talented people in the county that that would be a good problem to have, but we, it's a good time to talk about it. Councilor Howes, you're first, and Councilor Gatley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just, uh, and I'm not opposed to the, the uh, recommendation at all, but I just, we, we have a County of Brant Sports Hall of Fame, um, I believe, and I'm just, I'm just wondering how this ties into that, whether it runs in parallel. We, we should probably have a policy related to this, just because there are other professional athletes that grew up in Paris um, and that are, are working as athletes now. And that, uh, so I, I'm not opposed to the, the I support the, the recommendation. I'm just wondering if we need to look at a more fulsome uh, policy for this type of approach. Councilor Gatward, you're next, and then back to Councilor Chambers. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Through you to council, um, I believe that there is a policy on recognizing um, athletes to go into our Hall of Fames. We have one in Paris, I think, Burford, Mount Pleasant, St. George, and those uh, policies were set up um, by the Parks and Recreation Department in conjunction with the Recreation Advisory Committees, which were disbanded. And Recreation Advisory Committees used to recommend um, the, this type of um, athlete to be recognized, and it was arranged by staff to have a a presentation and an unveiling of their uh, recognition in the community. So I had thought the same thing and had emailed one of the counselors to say, well, why don't we just have staff prepare a um, plaque, or I'm not sure what the Burford um, Wall of Fame is like, whether it's on the wall we have a different one in Mount Pleasant, but I think that would be a great way to recognize Emma Woods. And rather than direct staff to investigate away, I think we should just direct staff to arrange for Emma to be um, inducted into the Burford Hall of Fame because it is at the arena, I believe, and she was a hockey player. So I don't know if Councillor Chambers likes that change or not, but that's what I wanted to say, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to Councillor Chambers and then to Councillor Wheat. Yeah, I, and I don't argue with that. I, I think that's a great thing, and I'm not uh, uh, saying otherwise. The, the, the issue here is the home of on the sign that is, is there now. And uh, I, I have a feeling it was just put up. Uh, and I don't believe there's a, a policy associated with, it used to be a, a home of Bill Logan in Oakland on, at one time, if you remember that. But it, it just seems that if Adam is there, Emma can be there, and I don't think we have to make a, a big deal of it. Uh, just a, a, a community recognition of, of, a, of one of the kids in the community that made good. You see them all over the, the countryside. I don't think we need a formal policy, but uh, if, if they want to put a Emma, home of Emma Woods up, then I don't have a problem with that. But at the same time, we do need to recognize these athletes and, and other uh, bills, et cetera, which we do in the local communities. And I, I don't doubt that uh, someday Adam will be recognized on the wall at the arena as will Emma. But in the meantime, if you drive by and you see home of Emma Woods, at least you'll know who Emma Woods <laughs> is as, as you drive through Burford. Thank you, Councilor Chambers. Councilor Wheat, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to, to Councillor Chambers, I'm really going to put you on the spot, and I should know this answer, 
because I'm in the Burford Arena weekly because my granddaughter plays hockey in the Burford Minor Hockey System. And I know you've got a wall of fame there, but there, you've got more plaques on that wall than St. George does. We've just got two, and you've got about, I'm guessing, ten. And I'll plus a couple other professional hockey players. Didn't play in the NHL, but they played in the AHL, and their sweaters are hanging in there. Now, I don't know whether Emma has been recognized, and I think if hockey was still on, I'd be there Saturday morning, and I'd check with Sonny Smith. But work through, if she's not already on the wall in the arena, and I know there's at least a dozen of them, or close to a dozen of them, Sonny Smith would know how to work through that to get a plaque up there for her. I believe, and I stand to be corrected, but I believe one of the service clubs erected that sign as you come in from the east side heading west into Burford, and I see it there all the time. And they even changed when Adam Hedrick got traded, they even changed the team because he's now an Anaheim Mighty Duck. And that was, and they, that got changed almost immediately the day of the trade. So I'm thinking it was probably a service club that erected that. I know in St. George, the Lions Club have a lot to do with the sign there, although we don't recognize any particular names, but we recognize organizations. But Sonny Smith would help you. Thank you, Councillor Wheat. I think, I think a policy is needed though, because I mean, these are hockey players, uh, but there's going to be dancers and music, musicians and artists and all kinds of other people from different parts of the county that are gonna to wanna to be recognized too. Councillor Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for clarification, it's DJ Foster at Burford, not Sonny Smith. <laughs> Sonny hasn't been with us for a while, but yeah, we know who you are. Thank you, Mr. About. Pierce. I stand corrected, it is BJ Foster. Thank you, and thank you for correcting him, Councillor uh, Pierce. Councillor Chambers. I, I just wanna, if I might, Mr. Mayor, and thanks for the indulgence, just to uh, respond to Councillor Wheat. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get the plaques up and she'll be in, inducted because she's done incredible stuff. The, the issue again is the home of, and I, I, the, the sign that you're referring to, I believe was a, a project of the original township of Burford. We put that up there and the, the various things put up. And it, it doesn't hurt if uh, in Adam's case, if uh, your uncle is the, uh, or was the owner of Brook Signs and, and I, I think that might have had something to do with it, but uh, we'll see if we can't uh, uh, get Emma a little, recognition and um, maybe it'll it'll happen but uh, we do need a policy if we but but please don't take Adam's sign down or there will be hell to pay <laughs> thanks thanks Councilor Chambers Councilor Gatworth yeah I I um I think that if Councilor Chambers wants to see that added to the sign we have a very capable sign department at the county and they could match what's there and put that up for us as well as doing the plaque inside the arena. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Miller. Thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just uh, on a different topic, <laughs> well, d different direction here. I just wanna, as far as Emma Woods, I, I, I don't know a lot about her, but what I do know, um, she's similar in, in Adam Henrique in that they both come from really good, solid families, salt of the earth families. And um, I was lucky, uh, her dad, Rob, coached uh, my son in hockey and I coached uh, Rob's son, H or Emma's brother Hayden in, in, so in soccer. So uh, great family, uh, natural uh, ath athletes, all of them. Rob's extremely competitive, but um, and, and, and I think we lost a lot when, uh, when they moved out of the community. Um, they were running the Scoops ice cream place uh, in Burford there for the longest time and uh, they contributed a lot. So just, Yes, we're recognizing Emma, but like I say, just, just remember that uh, these athletes just don't appear out of nowhere. They usually have uh, good solid backgrounds and, and Emma Woods is certainly uh, in that camp too. So I wanna recognize the Woods family as well. Thanks, Councilor Miller. So maybe what we'll do is we have something, a uh, resolution before us now. I think we should deal with it and vote on this, noting that we do need a policy and uh, we do need to send it back to staff for some sort of a credentials and uh, so I think we'll call the vote on this uh, resolution. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. Uh, noting that we do need to change things so that we, because hopefully there'll be more than hockey players that come out of the county of Brandon, we won't know where to put their signs. 
That's right. So thank you. Thank you for thank you for that. Uh, moving on to number 12, other business. Uh, back to Councillor Chambers again. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on, on a uh, happy, positive note, I did receive a, an email from uh, uh, the Burford Agriculture Society, uh, and they indicated to me that uh, in August, uh, the RCMP, RCMP musical ride is coming to Burford. Uh, and I don't know the exact date, but it's in, in August, and uh, there will be a, a day uh, of uh, uh, celebrating the uh, musical ride in, in Burford in the summertime. Uh, I did uh, tell the, uh, uh, respond to the email saying that I would uh, make that announcement tonight, and you'll probably see in your social media, et cetera, the, the word will get out. Uh, they did uh, allude to perhaps uh, uh, they may be looking for funding, but th there's nothing at this point. And I just uh, would like uh, uh, to give them the name of the, the contact so they can make application if, if that's uh, uh, appropriate. But the musical ride is coming to uh, Burford for a celebration in August. Thanks, Councilor Chair. That's very good news. Uh, did anyone else have anything? Councillor Miller, you had something, but no, you, you, you actually took care of it at the beginning, thanking uh, Public Works for the the work they did on the storm. Um, <laughs> it was a heck of a storm, and uh, I couldn't believe how many trees were down. So, and, and of course, hydro poles and lines and all that. So, so kudos to, to like you said, Mr. Mayor, to our Public Works staff for responding so quickly too. So. Again, Councillor Weed has something too for other business. Uh, is this on other business? It is. Okay. Um, just quickly, this was great tonight. There was no addendum. And way back, and Heather Boyd will remember when Coleman and I tried to get the addendums out, unless it's an emergency. And this would be a good opportunity before we have a new council for this council to look at getting rid of the addendum portion. Because quite often, and I don't want to name names, but when we used to have planning meetings, there was a specific planner would always come around with a little handout. You haven't even had time to look at it, and you're going to be discussing it. So I would like our clerk, with the permission of this council, to look at following the rules. If they want to be on the agenda, it needs to be in by a specific time, and I believe it was noon on Friday, Thursday or Friday of the previous week. And I think we need to start following that. Making a motion? No, I'm just opening it for discussion. Alicia's a new clerk. Okay. And uh, she, no, I'm not trying to put her on the spot. Okay. Uh, just there's something to look at because this council has got another two or three meetings. And let's get this worked out before there's a new council this morning. 153 days, Councilor Wheat. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, is there any other discussion? On that, does anyone feel the same way? Councillor House? I will agree that it's, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, I will agree that there are times when addendums show up day of meeting, afternoon of meeting, and it's, it's a significant enough document that you wish you had more time to absorb it before, before getting here. Um, so the, the idea, I mean, there will always be emergencies, there will always be exceptions, as, as Councillor Weed said. But uh, in, in, in spirit, I, I agree with the, the principle behind it. Anyone else have anything to say? So we'll just direct it back to the clerk to. I do. Oh, count, oh well, forgot you were in okay. there, Mark. That's okay, I'm, I'm the ghost in the machine. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think staff still can probably figure this piece out about what is and isn't the emergency or what is and isn't appropriate, because sometimes we get them and they, they aren't dire. They, they just sort of ask for. Um, and I know when we were in the pandemic, we had some, some meeting rules that were essentially for planning. We weren't gonna have anything too heavy or too controversial. And I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb or best practice for the addendums that it not be something that is a you know 40 page document, that it, that it be minor in nature. Uh, we can be flexible, but sometimes you're right. It's, it's and Councillor Weed is right as well, that you know, you're, you're getting these things at four o'clock and hopefully you're, you're around and have a chance to, to breathe them in. Um, but often we don't. So, so I, I wonder if there might be a staff discretion on, on this that, that could be you know, the will of the clerk. 
Uh, again, just a suggestion, nothing to, to act on at this moment, but that's all I had to say. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Mr. Bradley? Th thank you, Your Worship, uh, through you. So maybe just to clarify, the, the procedural bylaw does contemplate that there will be an addendum, and the addendum is presented to Council for its consideration. So if Council doesn't want to receive an addendum, you could not receive it when it's presented to you. Uh, I can't speak, I know we, we get information, you know, usually the agenda is published, and then some members of the public will send something to us and say, please put this in front of council based on what's on your agenda. And I think we usually do that. In terms of staff reports, we're very hesitant, and I don't think you see too many of them to put a staff report in, in front of council. We, we have some internal procedures, anything that gets, gets put on the agenda has to get my approval. And uh, so, so, so the clerk won't put anything on your agenda from staff uh, that hasn't at least gone through my office. And I'll usually make a decision, yeah, this is either fairly benign and something we'd like to get going, or it's, it's very serious and we need it to get in front of council immediately. But we, we do our best to not put anything of, of, of consequence in front of council in an addendum unless it has to be. But, but again, the, 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 you know, a, an addendum is contemplated by the procedural bylaw. It's put in front of council for council to consider it. You don't have to. You could easily punt this off to your next meeting or, or, uh, or, or, or deal with it another way, or you could accept it and move that, that addendum material onto your agenda. But again, most of what you do see is stuff that comes in from the public and has been asked to put in front of council, usually because you're making a decision on something. So, so hopefully that clarifies our position on how we deal with, uh, with, with, with what we call late starting information that we were been putting, putting in front of council. Thank you. Just, yeah, just to... <laughs> Clarify one point, Michael. Me, Michael, you, you, it's your it's your final call on whether it comes before a council meeting, but not for a, a committee meeting. Planning, as Councillor Weed pointed out, you, I mean that's not your role, correct? Through, through you, any staff report that's that's coming to a committee has to get get through my office. So even um, at planning, yeah, like even at, at planning, at a planning meeting. No, 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 again, only a staff report. So, so again, if we were going to try to to to, to, to Know, put a, a staff report on some policy topic at the last minute onto a, an, onto an addendum for any committee. Uh, it would it would need my approval. So, just so, so we do give it. My my point is that we do give it quite a bit of thought internally before we just go plunking something on a. But on but councillor, we triggered something in my brain because I I remember and the, it planning seems to be the worst. You know because everybody's trying to get their comments in. Sometimes you get something from a, a planning company and, and and there's there's so much stuff in there that you want to get through and I think. They gave this to us four o'clock on a Tuesday, two hours before the meeting, and I would need, if I knew about it, <laughs> probably an hour to get through. So, it it doesn't serve the public any good to get it to us at the last minute, especially if it's a, it's a weighty matter. So, and I've had, I've talked to people who said, well, can I get in? I said, well, you could, but it's the best not to, right? Because you want you want the committee members to to read it ahead of time and think about it. So. Thanks, Councilor Miller. Councilor Gatward. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did notice um, one report recently. Uh, it came on an addendum, and it was about 20 pages, and I didn't get it till 4 o'clock, and I had to be out of the house by 5.30 to come here, so I, I did not get a chance to read it all. So I agree with Councillor Howes and Councillor Weeks comments. If it's only a page or two, it's not so bad. But one thing I noticed in tonight's reports for planning, um, there was letters sent about Biggers Lane Landfill. And they, I didn't receive those, I don't believe, um, during the planning meeting as part of our package. They, they, um, came after we made the decision at administration and operations. And I don't know why, because there was one that was dated after the meeting, but the other ones were dated prior to our planning meeting. So I, I was surprised by that because public comments are there for us to consider and if we don't, receive them before the planning meeting. You know, it's difficult to ask questions that the public are concerned about. So I did ask some questions about the landfill that night, but um, 
I just wanted to make that comment and hope that it doesn't come forward again. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Gatwood. I, I know that we're since we've been talking about this, I do recall uh, different councillors around the horseshoe that have done the same thing. They've said, you know, this is too much information, Councillor Pierce. You don't like being uh, surprised at the last minute by little novels. Um, you know, as you said, you, you can't absorb them, you can't comment on them, you you can't stand in support of them or to, you know, uh, if we get them at four o'clock. So maybe just knowing that we don't have to accept an addendum, we can put it off to the next meeting and they'll, they'll probably appear very obvious to us now that we've spoken about it out loud. So uh, th there is protocol obviously that, that allows them, but we don't have to always accept them. And uh, there will be something that makes sense and others that will look hurried and rushed and we don't have to deal with it when they're presented. So I think that's what we'll do moving forward is just be aware that all addendums don't have to be acted on the night they're presented. Any other comments? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Bell, you're going to take us in camera. Yes, uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Gatwood that the County of Brant Council convene in camera to discuss litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals and proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality. Thank you. All those in favor? You can move us in camera, please.
Okay, Councilor Chambers. I have a resolution uh, that, that is ratifying the decision in camera. Do you want me to place yes, that now? Yes, please. Yep. Uh, it's moved by myself and seconded by Councilor uh, John Wheat that the Policy Development and Strategic Direction Committee in camera conference report of May 10 uh, be approved. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? None? Thank you. Number 14 is bylaws. Councilor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councilor McAlpine that the bylaws 14-1 to 14-16 be read for the first time. All those in favor of the first reading? Call for the second reading, please, Councilor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor McAlpine that the bylaws 14.1 to 14.16 be read a second time and all preambles and clauses be adopted. Are there any questions for the second reading? Seeing none, call for the, th oh, all those in favor? And the third reading, please, Councilor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor McAlpine that the bylaws 14.1 to 14.16 be read a third time, passed, signed, and executed. All those in favor of the third reading? Thank you. Anything else for the betterment of the County of Brown? Councilor Miller? One question. Um, if we have a suggestion for AMO delegation, does it need council approval or no? I I don't know that it needs council approval, but it needs to come to clerk at some point. Uh, so uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Councilor Miller, there was a report on no um, the administrative and operations requesting that any, any recommendations for delegations to AMO be forwarded by this council meeting. Um, that being said, should I receive a request, um, I, I would run it through the mayor and through senior management as to whether or not we could accommodate that. Sort of like an addendum, Councillor Miller. Come again? Sort of like an addendum. <laughs> yeah, I love addendums. So knowing there's a little bit of flexibility there, if you have something to bring forward. Anything else? Seeing none? Our next meeting is Tuesday, June the 28th, and I will declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you.